What is going on in the real estate market right now? We have seen climbing inventory. So sellers, homes moving slower. We've seen NAR lawsuits happening all about the realtors and the association, all about buyer's agent commission and transparency on it. We have seen highs in interest rates up to 2024 highs. So what does all of this mean? You see all this news, you hear all of this doom and gloom. So what does it mean for you as a buyer and seller? Well, I am Drake Absher. I'm down in Lafayette, Louisiana, and I have your March real estate update for Lafayette County and our MLS here in Lafayette, Louisiana. And I'm going to tell you everything that's going on and how it affects you as a buyer or seller if you're looking to purchase or sell in the next coming year. Let's briefly touch on what we've been seeing with the NAR settlement. A lot of people have been bringing up concerns and asking a lot of questions about what this settlement means. Does it mean that it's changing the face of everything for real estate agents and how we are paid now that uh, we are gonna be butted out or that the commission structure is changing tremendously? Well, to tell you the truth about what we're actually seeing, the actual data, the things that it points to, yes, there will be changes that it looks like are coming in, but it won't be till the end of the year or midsummer because we're looking at still things being locked into place and before the actual law takes place we have to get it signed by the judge all of those things have to be moved forward but we've even seen the DOJ reopening the case now so a lot more questions and things to be seen but we do know that the structure there's going to be more transparency on what the buyer agent makes so buyers will be aware of how much their agent is making and which will mean that agents will have to have very informed conversations with you as their client and make sure that they're telling you exactly where their fees come from or what fees that you would have to bring to the table to be able to cover for their services, which I don't think is a bad thing. To be honest, it is very important that buyers really understand that you are hiring a professional that is going to be working in your advantage, right? They are working for you to help you purchase a property, making sure that you make a great investment. So why shouldn't they be compensated for their time? Now, understanding where that compensation comes from is the actual conversation that needs to take place. Is it something that's going to be covered by the seller that is wrapped up into the price of the home that you're paying for? Or is this going to be straight out of your pocket, something separate that would be part of your closing costs? Can you finance it outside of your loan? Those are questions that we have to see that are going to go case by case with each agent. And that only time will tell if there will be other ways for buyers to be able to cover those clauses. But look at what's been happening on a national scale scale, we are seeing that according to an MBA survey, it shows that the purchase loan applications have been flat for two consecutive weeks so far. And now mortgage rates are beginning to pop again as we keep continuing to get worrisome inflation data. And as that continues to roll in, as long as it's worrisome, we can understand that rates are not going to be coming down. They're going to be holding where they are, or even in some cases still being volatile going up and down until we start to see the real cooling that the Fed wants to see. So we know around this season, this is the spring market is when we usually start to see an influx in data of people going to get applications because people are looking to move. They want to buy, they want to sell. This is usually the time of year where real estate starts to increase. But interesting enough, the data is actually pointing to that looking back to last year, we are down 13% in the amount of applications that are actually rolling in for buyers. So we're not seeing as many buyers out there as we had expected. And what is the result of that? Well, we are seeing an increase of inventory. So more homes on the market. What does that mean for you as a buyer? Well, that means less competition. That's wonderful. There's more options out there, better properties to pick from, and you don't have to squeeze and fight other people to try and get the right property or the one that you really want. According to MBA Deputy Chief Economist Joel Kahn, he said elevated mortgage rates continue to weigh down on home buying. Purchase applications were unchanged changed overall. Although FHA purchases did pick up slightly over the week, refinance applications decreased to fall by 5% below last year's. So we are really, really seeing uh, so far the market really responding to all of this inflation data, things that are happening, the economy not looking so great and people still unsure of where it's headed. So because of that, we are obviously seeing the results of it where not a lot of people are jumping into purchase. If we're looking at where the average 
mortgage rates are if you're curious right now as of april i'm filming this talking about march so here looking at the data according to the average rate it looks like 6.8 percent is where the they are out at 36 basis points and we know from a 24 a 2024 low which was at six and a half percent which was registered on february 1st and that is approaching this year's high of 6.93 percent which we've seen on february 28th of course this is not data that we're looking for especially if you're a buyer higher interest rates obviously do not equate to more buying power for you but it's the reality and the things that we're seeing in the market so let's get into the data we are going to talk about all of our entire mls as well as lafayette county so lafayette county uh, of course includes broussard it includes scott uh, Youngsville, also Karen Crow, and uh, of course all of Lafayette proper. So these are the areas that we'll be talking about when we compare Lafayette County, the areas that I specialize in, and then we're also going to include the entire MLS, which goes much further. But we're talking about March's data, right? Because we got into April, so now we can talk about all of March, but I'm going to compare it to what happened in February so you can stay right up to speed with what's happening each month rolling over. So now we're going to talk about the new listings that are entering the market. So in February, we saw the entire MLS having 595. Lafayette had 360 new listings that had hit the market. And then now in March, we're seeing 735 uh, listings now that had hit the market. And then uh, in Lafayette, we saw 403. So we see that's a pretty big, significant increase there, 13.6%. Uh, and then we've seen a 7.5% increase, which is good. That's good that we have new listings. Uh, you're not fighting uh, for all the pretty homes. There's more options out there. So that's good for a buyer. Uh, not so great if you are a seller. Now, uh, the amount of homes for sale. Uh, so let's talk about what we're seeing from an inventory standpoint. Uh, so the MLS, the entire MLS in February was 1,999. The Lafayette County was 1,053, which we increased over to the entire MLS of March, 2,034 listings, and then Lafayette, 1,063. Uh, this is pretty significant, guys, because if we look back um, all the way to February of last year, we can see we're only at 1,500 listings, which was really, really low. When we were actually going through the pandemic, we had got as low to 1,000 and listings so low inventory market now we're getting to a much healthier market as far as our inventory goes and we know why it's because increased rates and um, we're also seeing all of this market data that is scaring some people from actually wanting to enter the market so there's your reasons as to why we're seeing this increase uh, let's talk about uh, things that are actually going sale for sale and pending well December look extreme lows we started to trend up february we trended up and it looks like in march we did trend up so february we look we're looking at 475 282 in lafayette and we trended up to 562 and then 319. So we're seeing a 6% increase and a 4.6% increase in the amount of sales happening. So uh, we are seeing people that are in the market and obviously that's the spring market is what we're in. So we're expecting to see this happening. Now, let's see how many deals are actually closing. Ah, so January, we were at big, big lows, big time lows, right? Then we trended up in February, looks like 360 in the entire MLS and 208 in Lafayette. And we had trended up the entire MLS, 478, and then uh, Lafayette to 285. And you can see, if you compare it with this bar here, we are seeing that, yes, it was on the decrease all the way since it looks like July. So summer of last year, we've seen it on a slow and steady decrease. Now we're seeing an increasing all the way back up to spring levels just like last year so obviously uh, buyers are back there they are out they are active despite uh, the prices that we're seeing but let's talk about how that affects you as a um, as a uh, seller we're looking at days on market what is average days on market for homes that are being sold in February we were seeing a really high days on market we were seeing 57 days on market for the entire MLS. That's high, extremely high, especially when we were seeing real, real lows, right? Real, real lows last year, especially through the springtime, only about 14 days. Slowly, that's been on the increase. Well, now we're seeing 57 days. Lafayette Parish is 45 days. And now it is coming back down and it's coming down quickly. So we see the entire MLS only 38 days. And then Lafayette is 31 days. Um, that is a 
decrease in the days on market that we were seeing, which is a good thing for a seller. A seller does not want high days on market because that means it takes them longer to sell, which can also result in them getting less strong of a price on your property. So important information to keep in mind. Uh, looking into month supply. So the way month supply work is how much uh, month supply or how much uh, do we have on the market and how long would it take us to sell through that inventory? So that's important data for a seller as well because you wanna know how long would it take me to sell or burn through the amount of inventory? Is it a healthy market? And we know when we get up into the four and 5%, we are in what's considered a balanced and healthy market. So we have reached uh, that threshold, it looks like we are here. Um, in February, it looks like we had four and a half months. Lafayette is at four months and we've trended up. So the entire MLS, 4.6 months, Lafayette 4.1. Uh, so we are definitely trending toward a healthier market, more balanced with the amount of listings that we have to how long it would take them to sell. So this is a good thing for us, uh, especially for buyers, uh, because we don't wanna have to fight for properties, obviously. That's when we lose. Let's talk about the sales prices, because I'm sure you're wondering, uh, what are home values doing? Well, look at how steady they have stayed despite the increases in the rates because people thought, oh, we'd see a crash. Oh, we'd see the prices come down. We have not seen that strong decrease like some have expected. Uh, if you look at it here in January, we actually trended up and then February it stayed steady. So entire two MLS, 225,000. Lafayette, 250,000. And it's been barely a change. It looks like entire MLS is 226,000. And then Lafayette is 248,5, right? So we're still holding pretty steady, just a slight decrease from what we've seen. Nothing major to report about, but um, that gives you a good idea of what's happening in the area and what the prices are looking like. So let's talk about the dollar volume which means how much in actual sales is happening so in february we saw 84 million dollars in sales lafayette 58 million dollars in sales and now we've seen a giant jump right that spring market coming alive is what we're looking at so 119 uh, thousand, uh, excuse me, 119 million in the entire MLS and 83 million uh, in the entire MLS, uh, I mean, in the Lafayette County, right? Uh, showings to pending. So how many showings is it taking before homes go to pending? This is important for sellers, important seller data. So here, uh, the entire MLS, it looks like in February was at six showings, Lafayette was at seven, and it looks like we stayed exactly the same. So we are looking at six and seven, uh, exactly. So we're looking at um, about the same. So the market really hasn't changed a whole lot on that end from February to March. Uh, showings per listing. So how many showings does it take per listing? Um, and then we're seeing a little increase in that data. So for here, we're seeing the entire MLS 2.2 showings versus Lafayette 2.6 showings. And then we've seen a, a, quite a bit of a jump there. So entire MLS is 2.6. Lafayette has taken a, a significant, more significant jump, which is 3.2. So all of this data here gives you an idea of what's actually going on in the market. And that way you can stay exactly up to date know what's going on if you're a buyer or seller and of course if you guys have any more questions about any of this data or what I've gone on over if you want more information book a call with me or you can also uh, leave me a comment in the comments below and I would love to comment or respond to you about any of those questions that you may have about the market specifically all right so that wraps up your local market update thank you guys so much for tuning in with me I'm Drake Absher with Epic Realty and the Solux Group down in Lafayette Louisiana we are your new construction and luxury expert real estate team right down here and love to connect with you please if you found any value in this video please like follow and subscribe uh, let me know if you have any questions in the comments below I'd happy to answer those for you and also all the links are in my description if you would like to connect with me you can call text email me book a call I would love to meet you and let me know how I can help